today I have a 1964 Smith Corona Classic and I think I think this is the seafoam green. I will um, this particular model has some discoloration. I don't know if it had been sitting out in the sun or what. So it's a little bit hard to tell if it's the seafoam green or the alpine blue. It's still pretty, but it does, you can see the wear. And um, uh, so this, the purpose obviously of this type of this video is to show people who are interested in this particular typewriter. However, those of you who are looking at Smith Corona Classics or have one and you want to know how to use it, then this, this video will still be very helpful because it'll show you how to use it. But um, it came in three colors, the blue, the green, and the... Um, I believe the gray and uh, they're great, great typewriters. Uh, I'm just a fan. Normally, I, I assumed at first that this was a 40s or 50s model, but it is a little bit flatter than the 40s or 50s model. And like I said, it's a 1964. So let's take a look around this one. It's very similar to the other ones. And in the back here is where you're going to find your paper holders. And you just flop back down your margins, which you just press and drag. This paper guide, which is very helpful. I, a lot of people forget about it. You know, it's all, every time I get a typewriter, it's pushed all the way to the side. And that's probably because my husband's been working on them and he just pushes in there. But they're so helpful because when you have a multi-page project, you really need to use that paper guide to keep everything lined up nice. Okay. Um, on the back behind either side of the handles is your carriage release and the bell goes off whenever you are close to your margins. This is a portable manual typewriter, which means when you get to the end of the line, you've got to return your handle to the beginning of the line and it also will advance either one, two or three lines. You can see the markings right here, depending on how you want to do it. If you want to take, if you want to type things out and then may, be able to make edits, I use the two or three line setting. That way you have room to make notes. Um, also, let's move this all the way to the left. Pop this top open and you will see the ribbon on the inside. By the way, if you have one of these and you're looking for your serial number, you are going to find it right here on the left side. It's stamped in the side of the frame on the left side next to the ribbon. And then you can go to typewriterdatabase.com and look up the date of your typewriter. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Ribbon. Universal ribbon, two inch universal ribbon it takes. Uh, if you have the original metal spools and you wanna keep using them, please, please feel free to send them to us and we will roll them for you. Now this will last you a while when you get to the end of the spool, doesn't mean your ribbon is done. It's still full of ink. You just have to reverse the direction and you do that over here. That reverses the direction. So whenever you have issues with a typewriter, I always tell people, check your ribbon first. Make sure you don't need to reverse the, the ribbon. Make sure the ribbon is still within the guide wires and, um, and that it's turning. When you're typing, make sure that it's turning, okay, on both sides. All right. So that's how that one works. Here's your color selector. Black on the top, red on the bottom. And then to clear and set your tabs is right here. Let's go ahead and do some typing on this. And this is a great portable typewriter. So if you wanna be able to take your typewriter with you to different places for whatever reason, um, this is a nice one to take. And the color is just fun. We didn't paint it. This is, like I mentioned, it's kind of discolored. This is the vintage color. So it kind of has that bluish green tint. That's why I can't tell if it's really the alpine blue or the seafoam green. Um, but either way, it still looks good. All right, what did I say? 1964. So um, one of the things I've noticed right away between the, 40 and the 40s and 50s typewriter and the 60s are the keys. So the 40s and 50s have a flat um, key, 
and it's real thin. And this one is a, you know, you can see it's a real thick key. It's like this, can you see it like this? Versus it's like really thin on the 40s and 50s and it has a different feel. This feels very nice. This one on this particular typewriter, it's bouncing right back up, which is a good sign for a typewriter. Also, a difference, it has the number one, whereas the 40s and 50s typewriter, it's not, not all of them have the number one. I'm trying to think if mine does. I have a 58, I can't recall. Okay, this types super, super well. Let's try the red ribbon. Um, actually, I'm gonna. All right, excellent, excellent typewriter. Even though this particular one has some uh, wear on the outside, mechanically it's very sound. Um, but as I have said, and you can go back and watch some of my other videos, the um, Smith Corona manuals from the 40s and 50s are my absolute favorite. This is a 64, but I would rank this right up there with it. This is a Smith Corona classic 64. Um, you are going to love this. Great for writers, um, even for beginners. I think you would um, find this to be okay. Kids, it's going to be, um, they could use it, but it's they're going to um, have to do the single finger because finger, you have to push down pretty hard, but it's easy to type on. Thanks so much for watching. Tell me what you love about your Smith Corona Classic manual typewriter. And tell me if you think, do you think this is alpine blue or seafoam green? Would love to see your votes to see what we think it is. All right. Have a great day. Bye.